Hey guys, I'd like to show you a really quick uh, test run of Mission Model Paints. They're uh, premium hobby paints made in the USA and I'll be testing them out on uh, a project I've got on the go, a Ammo Knight, a Mark 44 Ammo Knight from the Machine and Krieger property. Here's a really quick look around the Ammo Knight model so far. I've built it up doing the Canon method that I've used before for producing the, uh, the display models for the Machine and Krieger property. And uh, I plan to use it up here on the, uh, the smoke launches, the, the steam launches they're called in this property, and I'm going to go with a red oxide paint from Mission Models. It's a non-solvent acrylic based paint, and I'm going to use it uh, with water and try some of their thinner in it as well, and let's see how it works. I removed the inner protection layer, a couple of drops out, and now a couple of drops of their thinner, and uh, it has very low surface tension, it was quite runny, so, so that, that's promising for, uh, for some effects. I'm thinking I might be able to use it for some panel lining, uh, like on the Gundam uh, work I've done before, as well as perhaps some glazes. Now, here I'm mixing it uh, both with water and with, uh, and with the thinner, and giving it a straight test uh, onto, onto pre-painted. So th this would be just like, this is going onto lacquer paint, so this is just how it would work going onto uh, a primed surface directly with the paintbrush. I'm going on the steam launcher here, uh, directly with the paint, thinned it about 50-50, uh, with water and uh, very nice. Uh, it went on, good coverage, good opacity. It wasn't patchy, uh, it didn't pull up against itself, it went on quite nicely. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm trying different kinds of brush strokes here, but yeah, it uh, similar handling prospects to maybe Vallejo, but a little bit more um, you know, a cross between Vallejo and Citadel, I could say. Um, until I started adding uh, their thinner, the thinner made it a lot runnier. So uh, for base coating, uh, I would go straight with water. I've yet to test their, uh, their polyurethane additive. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, this is what this does. Now this thing carries a, uh, looks like a spare fuel tank. It could be its main fuel tank uh, up underneath its, uh, its backside here. This was a prime position to, to add some more of this red oxide effect to, um, to, to balance out the, uh, the top part of the, the steam launches and help lead the lead the viewer's eye around the model. Uh, going here again, I went uh, just mixed with water and uh, directly onto the onto the green primer here and uh, covered pretty well. It took two thin coats. So um, coverage and opacity here was, was on par with say Vallejo. But I did feel that the paint was uh, under control a little bit more. Those ones, uh, Vallejo can have a tendency to kind of run off the end of the brush and it, it seems to want to go instantly into the grooves I'm trying to keep it out of. Uh, this one, you know, it might be it might be the uh, the value of new because it's a new paint, and I'm I'm enjoying testing it out that it felt better. So let's try it out a little bit more. Uh, clean up here in water, very easy. Uh, I came out, look at that, boom, one go, and the brush was clear, and uh, off to go again. You guys heard that too, right? It sounds like they've included a ball bearing in there to help mix up the paint. Uh, I found this stuff really easy. I mean, it's brand new paint, it's come straight over, but uh, a quick shake and, and out it came. Now, I've decided to add some red. They've got a, a standard red there in the mix, in the pack, and uh, I wanted to liven up the base color a little bit, just so that it's kind of in line with the yellow in terms of vibrance and saturation, and that will help it to, um, to survive the weathering process. Uh, and still retain that red oxide look. Note here, I, uh, I haven't allowed any drying time in between here. I, I ran off off camera uh, into the bathroom and hit this with the, with the hair dryer the, um, to, to, to speed this up in between coats. So it's had no curing time whatsoever. And you can see putting the, uh, the, the straight red paint uh, on here with, uh, with a slight mix of uh, thinner and water mixed. Uh, I'm going with about I was going pretty thick here. This was about, say, 60% paint to, to, to 40 uh, water thinner mix, and uh, no pull up whatsoever. The, uh, the the lower layers remained intact whilst I laid over the top of them, which was uh, which was quite nice. Coming back to the steam launches with the uh, the brighter red mix, just to liven them up a bit and, and test out if it would pull up uh, the, these coats, and no no problem at all. Again, it it went on very nicely. Moving around here to the back of the model, and I thought I could try it out on one of the slightly larger panels to see how it would work. I uh, spent all that time painting a lovely camouflage pattern on there, so let's cover it up and uh, see how it covers texture 
and uh, goes over the, uh, the the thicker layers of Mr. Color paint here. And uh, working with a thicker mix of the painting, and you can see it's drying out on the palette. There's not much left, so it retained a, a decent uh, opacity and coverage. It went quite well. At first, I was thinking the paint bottles they're quite large, and it looks like a, they have a very large flipper top on them. But uh, up under the lid, they've got a, a small. Uh, it comes out through a hole, and uh, it's a very small spout. So. It, uh, I was thinking, okay, somewhat like Vallejo, but actually it drops out decent size uh, drops, for want of a better word. So um, I, it's obviously, it's aimed at people using it through an airbrush because I, I imagine that would be a perfect size to be dropping it out into your cup. You know, you could measure it out well. But for brush painting like I've done here, that, that, that size you can see on my wet, on my, excuse me, on my paper palette there, is, uh, that was two drops. So uh, they were pretty economical. You know, I wasn't wasting a bunch of paint. I was just pouring out what I needed. And uh, pretty happy with that as well. That looks like a good price performance value point for them. Paint's dried. I'll give you a bit of a close-up look here. That's, uh, that's not bad. With a bit of weathering over the top, it should look good. Now, I could have left this at that. But uh, I wanted to show you, honestly, the, uh, the, the red oxide, it's a fantastic color and it's aimed at, at armor modelers. Now, do understand, we're, we're making sci-fi stuff here. We, um, we're not the primary market, so the, the, the colors are marketed at, uh, at armor modelers for, for, for now. So, uh, so they are a little bit more subdued. To make this read properly for this particular model, and this is just for this, it's not in general, just for this model, you can see the yellow there. I've got RLM uh, yellow from Mr. Color there. It's really bright. So to, to, to make this match up and have the same sort of vibrance level, I'm going to have to fine tune it. So I, I added more uh, straight red from uh, Mission Model Paints to the mix and uh, layered it on a little bit more. And I'm pretty happy with it. It, um, it layered on, but um, usually working with a red pigment, uh, you add just a little bit more on and bang, you, you've instantly overdone it, right? Now here at the end, I, uh, I went for one more test and I added a bunch more of just thinner to it. This is straight thinner uh, from their bottle and you can see it turns their paint into a glaze and it looks really cool. Uh, this has uh, uses, this has uses. I, I'm gonna test this out. Uh, first of all, I'm thinking panel lining, but I can probably develop filters, streaking effects and different things here with their paint. So uh, please stay tuned for that. We can run some more uh, experiments using their paint in subsequent videos. Mission Model Paints, premium hobby paints, uh, information in the description below. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, uh, painting and experimenting with what they do, please consider subscribing. See you in the next one. Bye.